those of you who watch this channel know I have more than just a few apartments. My rent bill alone for last month was over $55,000. It wasn't easy for me to get here. I failed a lot and you're going to too. I'm going to talk to you about the two main areas in which caused you to fail on your way to success and why it's okay. My name is Sean Rocky Jeech. This is Airbnb Automated. Let's get into it. Okay, welcome back. So like I said, my apartment complexes, I paid $55,000 in rent plus per month. And fun fact, when I was 16, I was hoping to retire making that same amount of money annually. I wanted to make $55,000 a year by retirement. That shows you how much or how little I understood about the world and about money and about my potential. The two things that will cause you to fail will either be one, you're unwilling to do the work, or two, you are unable to do the work. Let's start with willingness first because of course you're gonna be in denial about this. I'm gonna give you a couple examples. One is my best friend in college, his name is Nathan Abel, he's a concept artist. He is just really good at what he does and he's honed his craft through hours and hours and hours of study. We went to Parkside in Wisconsin together I moved down to Houston to take a sales management position. He moved down to uh, Austin to work for his mentor, which actually became his mentor, Jason Manley. He put a target on this guy's back and ended up working for him in short order, which was outstanding. This, this guy was a doer. So when he's working and studying at something called a pod, he confided in me that the 10 hours a day that he had to spend life drawing was increasing his ability to draw, but it was lowering his willingness to make this his career. He was losing his passion for it, and he was less and less willing to be an artist as a career. Um, this was burnout. So it's one example of how something can make you unwilling. But aside from watching out for burnout, there's a whole different realm of unwillingness too that you need to watch out for, which is just you aren't willing to put your whole person on the line. You're not willing to risk failure. You're not willing to look yourself in the eye and say that I failed because I tried my best and failed. Most people want to draw barriers and they're not going to give their all so that way if they fail they can say, well, I wasn't that into it anyway. So examples of where I am willing. Um, I am willing to sleep on the floor of a hotel room and give my two employees the two beds so that way we can save money on our budget, on our travel costs, and I've done it. I am willing to not have a home. When I started this Airbnb business, I had three properties and I would live in whatever one wasn't booked. And if all three booked, I'd use Priceline and get a cheap hotel for the stay because it was cheaper than what I was charging for my high rise in Houston. And until yesterday, this is an apartment that I'm setting up for me. I'm actually not gonna list this one. I'm not gonna rent it out. This one's gonna be my first apartment for me in years because I've been living in my Airbnb properties until they're all booked and I stay in hotels. That's been my lifestyle. I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to be a nomad to maximize my income so that way I can reinvest as much money as possible. Another thing I'm willing to do, I bought a Jaguar XJL beautiful car and somebody hit me from behind while I was in Jackson, Mississippi working on one of my media accounts and I got my insurance check, right? And I was thinking about it, I'm like, oh, which car do I want to buy? And I was thinking about the fact that I've been driving over a thousand like miles a week sometimes. I was putting a lot of miles on this Jaguar and I had an opportunity to get into a new property with my Airbnb business, but it was going to cost me some money. So instead of me buying another Jaguar with my insurance check, I paid cash for a Honda. By the way, I paid cash for my cars all the time. I never take debt if not needed. So I bought, I paid cash for a Honda Civic and then picked up three new units at another high rise. And that investment, instead of me cashing out and trying to take something for myself, my willingness to put my pride on the line and take something less, even though I've had more, allowed me to make more money. That's another place where I am willing that a lot of you are not. A lot of you just want to make money so you can show it, right? But if you read the book, The Richest Man in Babylon, they say, don't spend the money you make. Spend the money that you invest and the dividends also are invested. You're spending your grandchildren of your money instead of spending your children of your money. Maybe even your great-grandchildren. So invest your money, make some money back, reinvest that, make some money back, and maybe even reinvest that too. And finally, the dividends of your dividends are what you can spend. Are you willing to do that? Ask yourself, what are you willing to do that no one else is willing to do? Because you could be good at something, but if you're not going to go 110%, there's somebody who's going to outwork you. There's going to be somebody who's going to make a sacrifice you're not willing to make, make a trade-off that you're not willing to make because they want it more than you want it, right? That's the core of willingness. So ask yourself, really, what are you willing to do? Are you willing to give up your social life? Are you willing to give up your pride? Are you willing to give up your self-doubt? Are you willing to judge yourself for never truly working hard enough? Are you going to do that?
right? So let's talk about ability. You could be willing to just put it all on the line. You know there, there's that phrase like, hey, he'd sell his mom for a dollar? That means he's willing to make money at no cost, right? Just whatever it takes to make a dollar, which is not the best virtue sometimes. But is he able? Are you able? What can you do? Where are your strengths? Where are your weaknesses? See, the only cure for ability is practice and learning. So, for example, I went homeless in 2009. Right? I was a salesperson, top rep in the company I worked for. I became the youngest manager for their biggest account in Houston, and I learned how to become a manager over a year and a half. I wasn't able to be a manager, but I was willing. And I worked 80 hours a week to try to become a manager, and I burned out, and it was tough. And I stuck it through because I don't know the word fail, and I eventually became a good manager. Finally, a year and a half later, I ended up not staying with that company, and because of pride, I wasn't willing to take a step back. I wasn't willing to work for anybody anymore because my feelings were hurt and other excuses. So I went homeless and that's the cost of my pride. So the reason why I ultimately went homeless after leaving that company was I was unable to work for myself and to create money on my own in a sustainable way. I was good at sales, but I wasn't a business person. I was not able to conduct an entire business. I was able to sell and manage salespeople, but that's as far as it went. So my ability was lacking even though my willingness was there. I eventually read a ton of books on business, on leadership, uh, operations, human resources is one of the last things that I ever thought I would ever respect, but human resources is a big part of business. So as I studied and I drove between these accounts for this second company I started after I went homeless, uh, which is now what I consider my first company because it's still in business, um, as I'm learning and driving between accounts and and realizing just the depth of what it was that I did not know, um, my ability grew, right? And as my ability grew, I became more inspired. And because I was more inspired, I was more willing. And I just kept putting it all on the line and sacrificing the little things, sacrificing fun that I could have had. But now I have everything I could ever want. Realize that you may think you're able, but it's because you have blinders on. You might be um, biased to one pillar of work. You might be a good accountant, engineer, salesperson, administrator, and you think that a lot of the world's problems can get solved in the area of your expertise. When you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. You have an ability there, but you need to expand that. Step back, drop your pride, and look at what are the moving pieces that you don't understand. Try to figure it all out so that way you can work on your ability in those areas. And once you get enough personal momentum, people will want to follow you, and you can take that advantage to hire people who can do things that you cannot do. Building teams, of course, is the end of your path to building great organizations. You need to become a good leader, you need to become a good doer, you need to be able to be an example that people can follow, you need to work on your ability, your motivation, integrity, all sorts of other stuff to become the, the boss of the year, and then build your team and sacrifice for your team. And that's another area, are you willing to do it for them because it's no longer about you? And a lot of managers get that wrong. Willingness, ability, work on both, manage both, nurture both, be a student for life, and then you can be like me and have an Airbnb business that makes $100,000 a year. Or you can have a media company like me that saves newspapers, which people think I'm crazy for still being in the industry. You can be like me where I passed a water and mold remediation certification that were 40 hours each online, and I did it in two days because Hurricane Harvey hit Houston, right? I just doubled down and did these things. The better you get at learning, the more you can learn, right? So, and learning is a skill that you, take, that you learn with practice, okay? So read a book. It may not be your favorite thing to do, but read a book every day. It's going to become something you enjoy. And it's going to become something you're good at reading. Listen to audiobooks. It may not be your favorite thing, but listen to audiobooks every day, and it might change, and you become really good at learning from audiobooks. Next thing you know, you are a sponge for life. Every time you pick up new information, you're going to keep it, and then you can start connecting dots you never knew were relevant. And that's where you create new businesses, new opportunities, and your friends are going to go, man, you're just really talented. Man, you're just really creative. How do you have that inside of you? Man, I couldn't do that. You're just a different type of person. They think it's genetic. They think it's built in you, but it comes from thousands of hours of sacrifice and discipline. Thanks for watching Airbnb Automated, and I will see you on the other side.